Welcome back. In this video, we'll be adding the starboard and port side fillers, vertical beams, and the keel pad to the transom. Properly positioning the transom on the strong back was an important prerequisite to this video. To cut out the fillers, I start with Shaper Trace. I know that each filler is supposed to be 9 inches wide, so I place a ruler 9 inches away from the edge of the transom and make sure that it's vertical. Then I trace out the shape of the filler on a large post-it pad. Because the filler is larger than the shaper trace plate, I take a photo of the drawing. On the computer, I scale the photo of the drawing to fit within shaper trace. And then I tape it to the computer. I open the Shaper Trace page on the website and take a photo of the screen with the frame. Looking at a recording of the screen on my phone, you can see how the software works. It turns the photo into a scan, which is not ideal on a glossy computer screen. So I adjust the scan to remove the unnecessary detail. The result is an SVG file of my drawing, which I save to the Shaper My Files. In Shaper Studio, I import the file, and I rescaling it, knowing that the filler is supposed to be 9 inches wide. Next, I plan the cut. In the workshop, I cut out the filler using Shaper Origin. Each filler is supposed to be three quarter inches thick. So what I did is laminated first a quarter inch filler and then a half inch. I cut the half inch plywood with two passes. With this method, my fillers fit really well. Next, I mark and cut the keel pad. Next, I measure out the placement of each of the vertical beams.
and then mark the ends for cutting so that the vertical beam fits inside the transom frame. After cutting to length, I simply dry fit each vertical beam. The king board, which is in the center of the transom, is one and three quarters inch thick, so I make this by laminating two boards. Notice that it butts up to the keel pad. Now it's time to permanently bond with epoxy. I wet the plywood and the end grain of the hardwood boards with unthickened epoxy. While the surface grain of the hardwood did not need to be pre-coated with unthickened epoxy, I forgot and did it anyway. Next, I move to the epoxy thicken with a high density filler. I coat the mating surfaces of the transom frame with thickened epoxy as well. And then place the fillers. And the vertical beam. I would say the most difficult part of the process is actually holding the boards in place with clamps. I use a vertical laser line to help position the keel pad and the king beam at the center of the boat.
For a better view of the process, I mounted the camera on frame 12. Here, I'm just wetting the frame with unthickened epoxy. Since I had it mixed up and didn't need a large quantity of thickened epoxy, I decided to start coating the frames as well. Here, I use a thickened epoxy to attach the remaining vertical beams. Well, that's it for the transom. Till next time, cheers.